I've got an itch I can't scratch. I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me. An open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly. Thoughts jumbled round. Think I need a new lobotomy. Wait. All these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got. I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off. I won't let them win. I'll take a stab. I want to chase a bag. I want a way I can change all the things I lack. I gotta face the facts. I gotta taste in that. Got me obsessed with the rest. I got an itch to scratch. Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today we're gonna to discuss how to carry a knife. Now, this is gonna be part one of three different videos, and then I'm probably gonna continue it from there and do a full series on how to carry a knife, why you would carry a knife, how to use a knife, because I get these questions all the time here on the channel, but I'm gonna go very in depth, and the reason I had to break this up into three parts is because there's so many different kinds of knives and ways to carry them, that I'm really just gonna have to do a three-part video series. So bear with me, you guys have seen the knives that were in front of me already at this point in the video. So I'm gonna tell you now one of the most important, if not the most important key factors of carrying a knife, and that is the consideration and the balance between concealability and portability okay and which is the size of the knife basically and then over here you've got ease of use okay and the functionality of the knife so how easy the knife is to carry how generally speaking how small it is and then the system of carry how convenient it is to carry all of that stuff is always a balance against how effective it is because a smaller knife is not as effective but easier to carry there are also some very big myths in the knife community. Myth number one is that a folding knife is a tactical folding knife, okay? There's a lot of people that sell tactical folding knives and I personally don't see how that a folding knife or any of the available folding knives on the market currently in 2022 can be considered tactical because they do not aid in the employment of tactics in really any way that I see them. And it's they're using that ease of carry myth, okay? They're using that ease of carry generality. They're using, saying that these are easier to carry and that's a myth. So these folding knives are not easier to carry, but it is a balance and they are not easy to draw. They're not easy to use, okay? They're not effective necessarily because of the fact that they fold, they have more moving parts. All right, and then I've done a separate video on this is called even the snaggle tooth. And it's just an absolutely terrible idea of trying to get a blade to catch on your pocket at the same time that you're pulling it out of your pocket in hopes that it opens. All right, obviously it's not any different or better in this case than a knife of this size, it's gonna be very similar size, but this karambit, for example, I can just pull out of the sheath twice as fast and it's ready to go. There's no moving parts. I don't have to open it, I don't have to depend on anything. So we're gonna discuss that. I'm gonna start with this stiletto, okay? It is a Italian style stiletto. It is from Italy and it's a switch blade made in Italy, all right? Pretty cool, but it has very little value as a use knife, okay? It's just, it's a trinket, it's a toy, it's cool. So you've got your cool factor. And then this is the, the OTF that I'm including in this video. And in future videos, we'll discuss neck carry. We'll discuss more various and a lot of different ways of carry. There's gonna be at least three videos of how to carry a knife. This particular one is the most popular, okay? And I'm going, I'm starting at the worst method of carry and the worst effective knives and going into the best in this video. So this is cool factor. So if all you want is cool factor, if you're if you're gonna be carrying a knife, for example, that you're never gonna consider using for self-defense, that you maybe wanna show off to your friends or you just wanna feel cool, then this is a great idea. If you have to use a knife at work to cut open fruits or something like that, maybe it would be a good idea, but then even then these OTF knives, all OTF knives tend to get 
dirt and debris inside of the mechanism and then they're just they just become a pain in the butt because they stop working randomly and while you're if you had to use it for work like even for cutting fruit the day that it stops working properly it's just going to be a pain in the butt and there a lot of them are impossible to clean like microtech for example they come with specialized screws that you can't even take it apart and clean it if you wanted to so from there we've got knives this has a thumb stud so it's a folding knife that you can open like this and then it has this crazy thing that's called a snaggle tooth that's supposed to hook on your pocket which uh, something maybe a lot of you guys don't know if you're not, you know, in the tactical community or if you don't have a lot of real world altercation, combat experience, fight experience, stuff like that, then you don't realize how much your fine muscle control and your fine motor skills shut down during a, a fight or flight, okay, during uh, the response to being in a life or death situation. So you're fumbling with a knife trying to get it open is just a terrible idea but it's an improvement over the otf knife if you are going to be using it every day and you don't mind you know opening it manually but again i wouldn't recommend carrying a knife like this if you depend on using it for self-defense also you've got a lot of moving parts and it could break at any time because of the a variety of moving parts this particular is a zero tolerance Ken Onion design, one of my favorite, probably my favorite folding knife. I don't carry it very often just because of my take on folding knives, but it's pretty beefy. Zero Tolerance does a good job making their knives. And I would carry this, for example, as a, you know, maybe a third option if I had three knives on me or if I was just going to be using it to pull out and, and cut cord or something like that at least as a, maybe as a backup, as a secondary option. If I have a, a knife that I'm carrying for self-defense and then this has a work knife, I might carry it for, for, you know, cutting fruit, cutting rope, cutting cords, opening packages, stuff like that, everyday use. Another quick tip is that I don't recommend using your self-defense knife every day just for everyday carry tasks or for everyday cutting chores because you have that possibility that you're gonna forget to sharpen it and it's not gonna be in or do maintenance and it's not going to be in the proper or best shape when you do to go to use it. I have had this knife for several years now, still in good shape, still in working order, albeit I don't use it very much. But it's uh, very heavy and if we're talking about self-defense still, it may be the best folding design flipper tab. Okay, so you have to open it, you got to pull it, you got to find motor skills, find it in your pocket, pull it out like this, then you change your hand position to here, then you change your hand position to here, then you flip it open, then you change your hand position to here, and then you're ready to use it in a self-defense situation. So still not ideal. What is ideal in a self-defense situation, self situation is a fixed blade. Some guys like neck knives, some guys don't. This particular design from Bone Tactical Karambit gives you the option to very quickly and easily just stick it in your waistband of anything you're wearing, whether you have a belt or whether you don't. From there, you literally just reach down and grab it and it's in your hand and ready to go immediately. It's so much faster than any kind of a folding knife or any of the options that we've already discussed. This karambit in particular is a, only for self-defense. So you have to ask yourself what you're carrying a knife for. I would carry these two knives, this one for everyday cutting chores if I needed to, and then this one as a self-defense option. If I have more time, I can even stick my finger in the finger hole and then I can use this even more effectively. If I am in a very big rush and pulling out my knife to save my life, I don't have to use that finger hole. I can just reach down and grab it like we talked about. So this is kind of the, as far as carrying a knife for self-defense, this is pretty much one of your best options that you can have here. And then we start to get, when we get into the really big side, although this, this is a very large knife and this belt clip is removable. So this can be mounted on a plate carrier through here. I can put this same clip on here and then I can use this as well on my belt in a smaller package, less printing and all that. But the way that it's set up right here, it's for belt carry and it's just really very effective and even fully concealable with just a shirt like I have on. You guys have seen at this point already that this knife can be fully concealed even under a light clothing that's not hot. It's middle of the summer. I'm here in Central America right now and it's 
hot and I feel great because I have the ability to have this El Sicario shirt on that's the basically, you know, moisture wicking material, but still fully concealed this full size knife. So the downside is that, yeah, it is a little bit more difficult to conceal. You are going to have to have more clothing on. You're going to have to have a, a shirt like the El Sicario in order to conceal it. But if I were to be out in the woods or something like that, or if I were to be a police or military, then this would be my best option because I want more effective. Although, yes, it is more, it's bigger and it's always that balance like we talked about. This is harder to carry, okay? It's harder to carry, but it's much more effective, okay, if I had to be using it as a weapon. In this particular case, I can still carry it, but it's always with the purpose of why do you have a knife? This is more specifically not just for self-defense. It slashes very well because of the recurve grind here, but it also stabs. So it could be used for a military type person for a strictly assault type purpose. This knife here is not what you would want for a offensive. It's more of a self-defense type knife. While this one here is specifically, the, the stiletto design is specifically, stiletto style blade here is specifically designed to fit in between the ribs and take out sentries or take out take people out. So if you're in the military and you're looking for a knife to infiltrate areas where you have to use silence and stealth, this is gonna be your best bet. Mount it on your plate carrier, mount it on your chest rig, wear it on your belt, and it's gonna be your best option as far as that goes. We will continue in the future. Like I said, in the next episodes, we're gonna discuss light clothing and gym wear we're also going to discuss heavier clothing and a, and a full combat or out in the woods roll. What I'm discussing in this particular video is middle of the line, okay? So this is gonna be your average person. This is gonna be you watching this video because I've covered the full spectrum of the cool guy all the way to the professional use military police. Actually, let's be honest, police shouldn't be out there looking for people to kill. So this is specifically military use all the way down to the cool guy who just wants to carry a knife to show to his friends. Your, your, my top recommendation for self-defense for the highest, you know, beautiful Coca Bolo handle scales, beautiful wood handmade hundred percent. Of course, there's other options out there. We even have a lower level of this Karambit, but if you want top of the line, this is top of the line for self-defense. Top of the line for everyday carry, as long as you're carrying two blades, in my opinion, if you really want a folding knife, I don't recommend folding knives, but this is this is the one I recommend, 0301 from Zero Tolerance. It is very heavy, but it is what it is. And then I just threw another folding knife in there for you guys that, you know, maybe just to discuss kind of the, the dynamics and then also to talk about how that snaggle tooth design there is not what I would recommend. So th that's really the, the in and outs of this. Please let me know what you think about these videos and what you want to see more of. Like I said, we're going to discuss in at least two more installments, very light clothing, like gym wear, jogging clothes, very like tank top and gym shorts, what you can still carry a knife and how to carry a knife like that. And we're also going to discuss out in heavy wild wilderness or military type people, uh, hardcore, more hardcore environments, how to carry a knife as well. So after that, let me know what you want to see more of, whether it would be how to use a knife, martial arts tactics with a knife, how to use a knife in general, maintenance, knife maintenance stuff, how to care for a knife, why you would carry a knife. Let me know, please. Comments below so I can keep these videos coming in the way that you guys want them. And I really enjoy being able to share my professional experience and then even dispel a lot of myths like we did in this in today's video and just get down to the nitty gritty and do what I feel is helping people because in today's culture, the man that carries a knife, the prepared man is really what we need more of to be the example that we want to set and to be the change that we want to see in the world. Thanks for watching. Bono.